Joining me now, our real estate guy, Mitch Rochelle. Existing home sales down to a 14-year low, 3.84 million sold. That's it. Is this as bad as it gets, or could it get worse? I, it's pretty close to as bad as it gets. Uh, it arguably could get a little bit worse. Uh, we still have the supply issue that I've talked about ad nauseum. But I think what's going on right now with, and you see it also in auto sales, there's this pre-election sort of anxiety factor that has people holding back from big capital purchases. Um, no. So that tends to happen, and I think this election's created probably more anxiety than others in the past. So. My read and talking to realtors, uh, as I always do in preparation for my appearances, Stuart, um, I think that they're feeling that the sense of, um, you know, holding back, which means after the election, either there's going to be a flood of people making decisions because they feel good about the direction of the economy. It's also possible that, you know, it could get worse if people don't like the outcome. So a lot depends on the a election. A lot depends outcome. on the election. Because, okay. I'm not going to ask you, as I did during the commercial break. Yeah. Who, I won't ask you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in, well, I already told you in a previous segment about the sign on my lawn, so I think I'm wearing it on my sleeves. you got a Trump sign. I have a Trump sign. I have three, actually. Three Trump signs and, on my Is lawn. this in your Florida place? No. Yeah, Florida, when I get there on uh, Thursday, there will be a, a bevy of Trump signs also. Wait, Wait a minute, you've got a Trump sign in on New your lawn in, in, in New Westchester York? County, yeah. In yeah. Westchester County? Yes. And it created signed wars because neighbors on both sides of me decided that they have to put like their Mondaire Jones and uh, Harris signs. It created sign wars in okay. Westchester County. We'd better move on from We this. have to move on. Uh, <laughs> in the swing states, we got this survey. 61% of parents think that their children will not be able to afford a home. That's in the swing state, 61%. Has home affordability become a really political issue? Oh, I think it's absolutely a political issue. Interest rates are a political issue. The economy is a political issue. Uh, and I think the swing states get more attention. They're bombarded with ads about, you know, what happens if she's the president and what happens if he's the president. So I think it's raising anxiety. I looked at that study. It was a thousand people across seven states. So that's not exactly a great sample. Sure. But it shows you that the plurality of those people responding to the survey, 61 percent, feel like this is you know, the American dream is on the ballot, which could tell you that people are going to vote in favor of the American dream and, and maybe a red wave, as Adam Johnson said I, in the I, commercial I, break. I would yes, bet sir. good money that yep. when you talk to realtors, as you do, to prepare for the segments on this show, they will tell you that the best way for youngsters to afford a home is to tap into mom and dad. Oh, uh, that's what's happening across yeah. the board. Mom, is it? mom and dad go on the on the to the open houses with them, right? They're, they're, that's that's absolutely nothing new. But what happens if you don't have a mother and father who've got the money, right? You know, it, it, it is the biggest issue. This is why existing home sales are down. Going to the first question you asked me. So, so do you, do you think that mm -hmm. Kamala Harris's offer of twenty five thousand dollars for first time home buyers, uh, a new generation of home buyers, does that work? Because that applies to people who don't have rich parents. I, listen, in theory, you would think that uh, giving people money would, would, you know, stimulate the ecosystem. The problem is it's such a bad policy. We saw it in cars. Um, as my wife, Debbie, who's watching this segment uh, in the studio, says it's like, you know, offering kids in school free, you know, free extra lunch or help with lunch money so that they vote for, you know, class president. It's actually ridiculous. You put twenty five or fifty thousand dollars into the money supply in housing, you are going to raise prices by a minimum that because right now somebody's got more currency so maybe you need every nickel but the other person bidding is going to outbid you when they have mom and dad helping so it doesn't solve the problem and Madison? real quick as the young person who would love to own a home one day you want to get adopted by me so well, I, that would be great I, I mean i do love my parents but you're talking about all these young people getting help from mom and dad. Isn't it also an issue that mom and dad aren't selling their homes? Oh, mom yeah, and dad are sure. holding on to their homes, so we don't have that availability to get into the market. If mom and dad sell their home, they will be in a supply-constrained market looking to replace that home. So they ha maybe they have a four-bedroom home and they want a three-bedroom, sure. two-and-a-half. They're now competing with everybody else for that home. It's really, when you constrain supply, which is what's going on in this housing market, and then you you juice demand with either low interest rates, which we saw, or cash to buy homes. What do you do? You raise prices. It's pretty simple. Econ 101. Mitch Rochelle, good stuff today. Thanks very much indeed for Thanks, being with us. Appreciate it.